Uh, <laughs> well, when you lose a ball, we need to you need to close down quickly to, to win it back. Yeah. So I think w- what happens in in, in world fo- what's happening in world football mm-hmm. uh, as the younger generation have come through, I think they try to sound intelligent and trying to make out like the they invent in the game. Meanwhile, it's all words that are, are basically being used. A lot. Uh, speaking of which, where, which, which stage would you say you are right now with Matatanza? Would you say that you are at a winning stage or are you saying that you are survival mode as it stands? Uh, I, th- I think it's a bit of both because we are never building a team and enhancing the team. Should Safa come calling for the Bufana Bufana job, would it be something that would interest you? I've always Sometime said, in the future, I'm not yeah, necessarily... Yeah, I've always said a national team job should be managed by an older person. Why? Because you, you're you not a coach. You're not a Bafana coach. You're a, you're a Bafana selector. And we, we had a very old Chiefs team and a slow team. No pace. So when you play in Champions League, you need to be old, slow, and, and methodical. Because it's slow. The football's very slow there. Mm. So it suited what we had. Do you understand? When yeah. we came domestically where it's 100 miles an hour, we never had any legs. We had no legs in the team. And that was my big thing. Because what is football? The bottom line is, don't let any coach tell you any different. It's where we want to play and where we want to allow you to play. That's it's so it. simple. Yeah. Do you understand? What? Yes. Completely. So if I'm playing rugby, I want to play in your half. I don't want you to play in my half because then things happen. Now, Gavin, um, speaking of football, you were obviously a footballer. You still have the legs, by the way. Don't go. Tell me who is the one player, one of the best players that you played against. Played against? Yes. And played with. Um, the game was different and all the styles came together. We had the white league, the black league mm. and the colored federation league. And when you put this whole thing together, there was a good brand of football, you know. Um, and it was very, very difficult as a white teams to play against black players because they were undisciplined. You know, the left wing didn't stay left wing. The right wing didn't stay right wing. You know, so guys like Teenage Dudler, who was a left winger, he used to go get the ball from the goalkeeper and start playing one-twos down the middle of the field, but he was a left winger. Interesting. You know, so it's unbelievable. It's a good question there because Monday to Friday you'll see a player, he's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And you think to yourself, well, I'm going to play him Saturday because I've got, I've got a gut feel. Mm. Put him in on Saturday, he can't, can't tie his bootlaces. Mm. He couldn't control the ball. Then you'll get another player who's really a bad trainer they're not bad, but they, they, they don't show. And mm. come Saturday, he comes alive, you know, with most players. And the people say, oh, well, they'll go out drinking. Well, if they go out drinking, they, they, they disrespect our team. They mm. disrespect the game. They disrespect me. And they all get caught out and I'll get rid of them. Welcome to Onside ZA, proudly brought to you by Betway. Get way more. Remember to use the affiliate code Onside ZA when joining as a new user on the Betway app. Of course, we're back once again, bringing you more of the football action and a very special interview with the one and only, several times Coach of the Year, DSTV Premiership Champion, three years in a row. No, we're not talking Sundowns currently. We're talking Supersport United's Gavin Hunt. Gavin Hunt joining us on this episode of Onside ZA, where he takes us through his history. He takes us through some of his views on modern football and some of his philosophies. Really great interview. Stay tuned for that one coming up in this episode. For me, right now, with me, Len Moleko. Thank you so much for joining us. Tepi Worldwide, as always. Thank you, darling. And Super Sub, everyone's favorite. And of course, welcome to all of you, the ballers. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, For those of you who did watch on Saturday, the Sundowns vs. Chiefs live stream watch along that we did, you will have heard that we were doing a giveaway of a Dr. Kamalo Kaiser Chiefs shirt from the 1998-99 season Mm -hmm. uh, and a thousand rand Betway top up. The winner of that, Mm -hmm. Mr. Calvin Kane. Love him. Congratulations, Calvin. Congratulations. Calvin, thank you so much for always engaging in the comments. Mm-hmm. Your- 
prediction was absolutely correct as well. Uh, so get in contact with me on social medias at Marco J. Martins. Send me a DM somewhere, preferably Instagram if you do have it. Uh, and I hope a medium fits you. Did Le Moleko get, get a DM as well? Yes, I did uh, from Felix Mabaliso or Mbaliso. Yeah. Uh, because I was giving away uh, 100 bucks yes. uh, Betway voucher. So yeah. that has been sorted as well. So congratulations, congratulations. to Felix. Congratulations. Felix. He got his voucher. So uh, the, the giveaways have started and they will not stop. One giveaway every month guaranteed on Onside ZA. Stay tuned to us. Uh, our upcoming social channels will keep you up to date on that. So stay tuned to those as well. Right now, we are short on time because we want to sneak in that long Gavin Hunt interview. You guys are going to love it. I promise you. Yeah. Uh, but let's kick off with the Premier League, guys. Uh, Premier nice League jersey, action. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's cute. A little bit less nice this week than it was last. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. This is a, a derby. Yeah. It's a derby day. Yeah. Let's look at the Premier League coming up this weekend. Um, Manchester United back to winning ways, guys. Uh, two wins in a row. The most recent of which in the Carabao Cup or the English Football League Cup mm -hmm. uh, against Crystal Palace. Mm. And they will be kicking off against Crystal Palace at home once again at Old Trafford this Saturday. Uh, guys, what do you make of Manchester United in general? Just a short touch on Manchester United in general in terms of the improvement of form uh, with the backdrop of all the goings-ons in behind the scenes. Um, I was actually impressed in the Carabao Cup game midweek. Uh, I mean, even seeing Harry Maguire playing mm -hmm. and mm. contributing. <laughs> <laughs> and playing well. And playing mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was rather impressed uh, with, with, with the team. And... Something I found very weird is that obviously when you play Carabao Cup, you tend to go towards more of the fringe players. Which both teams did, Which to be fair. Which both teams did, to be fair, yes. And, and a team like Manchester United should have a stronger squad depth, so a stronger B team or but, second 11 than a team like Crystal Palace. But Paris. that second 11 that Man United played... Yes. Uh, it was a mix of it was a mix of like you know the guys who start regularly in yeah, the Premier League, like Varane and Casemiro. Yes, mm. um, I was rather impressed with them. Um, I think that mix up of of the players were actually more impressive for me than they were against Burnley uh, last weekend because certainly the convincing that they won with against Palace versus a struggling Burnley and only managing to get a one nil one nil win for me did not really land per se and yeah. with how many United have been performing in recent days. And that's looking at that stat only, let alone the performance where Burnley were by far the better side. Yes, and Man United, definitely. just the quality of Bruno Fernandes, for example, pushed them over. Yeah, no, look, that game was, uh, for Crystal Palace game, I think my standout player is to be Amrabat. Starting at left back. Mm. Starting at left back and... Moving into midfield in the second Moving into half. midfield, you know. I mean, this is a new thing these days. He got I think, inverted. Yeah, he got inverted and... Terminology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Inside joke or what? Uh, yeah. You'll see later. You'll see later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think he had a stellar of a game, you know. I mean, he's he was winning all those duels, you know. He's passing... His passing game is out of this world. I think... I remember, Marco, you had your doubts with his signing... But I think it might just be a player that proves you wrong, you know. I, I agree. And, and uh, I still have some concerns in terms of looking forward. Uh, this was not the best Crystal Palace side. And some of the forward passing lacked real cohesion okay. Okay. from Amrabat. So that is still a concern of mine. But he did look phenomenally good at retaining possession in general. Mm. So no silly Manchester United mistakes that we've been getting used to in terms of the back passes being slack and loose and losing mm. possession. They mm -hmm. were all very good quality in keeping possession. And his ability to regain possession is what I always said was a good stat of his and why he was purchased for breaking up play. Uh, but the concern was, and a few ballers shared my views on this, is is he a big game player for Manchester United as in oil? with him and Casemiro is Manchester United too defensive um, and would that be suitable against Manchester City but then not against some of the smaller oppositions who you have to be more enterprising in your yeah. play for, so for me uh, if you look at the makeup of the entire squad uh, and I don't want us to spend too much time on Manchester mm -hmm. United yeah. because we still have other fixtures to go through mm -hmm. um, that starting 11 that was used 
is pretty much a starting 11 that has the ability to be a starting 11 in the league. I mean, Onana started. Oh, for sure. Onana, um, mm-hmm. the Nacho, is it? Harry Maguire used to be mm-hmm. a starter. Varane started. Mm-hmm. Dalo, who was yeah, yeah, impressive yeah. for me as well. Mm-hmm. Casemiro started. Mason Mount came in. No, no, big no. buck signing. He came in. I think all those players you mentioned, Bar Maguire, maybe Dalo, who might be replaced by Juan Bissaka. Yeah. Yes. Those are Ten Hag's priority starting 11 players, Casimiro, Mounts, Varane, and Onana. I mean, from sometimes you even get Garnacho uh, as a starter. But from sometimes. Well, and Facundo yeah. Pellistri now currently is the yes. only first team right winger, really. Mm. Yeah. Because Anthony Greenwood, everyone. Drama. Hey. Mm. Facing yeah, court. but there's just but lots yeah. of drama happening at the team. And I think more than anything, what's happening in the background should not be necessarily uh, don't don't air your dirty laundry, and mm. I think yeah, Eric Ten Hag yeah. is not very good at doing that. Mm. And for some odd reason, I feel like that also has some level of bringing a, a misalignment. Yeah, look to the mm. team. No, definitely, I agree with you there. But I've, he had a bride, guys. He had a first team bride <laughs> with the spouses, with our Sancho, <laughs> with that Sancho. Sancho's with the academy, man. <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, let's move on, guys, because Man United getting two wins in back to back doesn't deserve all of our attention. So let's let's move on uh, to your team, Len Moleko Arsenal. They will be travelling to Bournemouth, who are a very good football side of the draw with uh, Tottenham Hotspur in the North London derby. Yeah, um, really did not understand like where Arsenal almost got it wrong, but pound for pound, I mean, you look at a Spurs team, and I think we've spoken about this, uh, they don't really have a lot of commitments. Uh, and Arsenal had just come back from obviously playing a European game in the Champions League and obviously looking ahead that, okay, cool, we also have a Carabao Cup game. So essentially, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, very short, like that's that's a, that's, that's a week, and you're playing three games. Yeah, and squad depth per se, I don't think it's what Arsenal necessarily have in terms of switching around what uh, mm. City has, for instance. Yeah. It's not. So you sure Ars- about that? Yeah, well, not now. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed when Pep said, I think it was during the week that, hey man, at the rate things are going, if I had not gone for a back operation, I was gonna play myself because I don't uh, have players. Wow, you know. So squad depth, um, I think a lot of the teams are actually suffering the injuries, especially your Arsenal's mm. as well as City. I think as that well. December World Cup was an issue. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Look, and and also, the rest was not enough uh, mm, when the season broke for the new season to start. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also you must remember it's a derby, you know, and team tends to turn up when it's a derby. And uh, Arsenal and Tottenham is never shy of goals, you know. It's just one of those games where mistakes are going to happen. Yes, you know, it cannot. We cannot really say that they were like. A lot of mistake from Arsenal or, or so, you know. It's just one of those games where they were also a little bit uh, lucky in terms of uh, scoring that goal. I mean, it was a ricochet from Romero, eh? Yeah. Romero just had the worst match of his life. Yeah, you know, he had sure. the worst life. Penalty, penalty, penalty yeah. goal. Penalty, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, and it cost me a lot on fantasy, hey? Eh? Yes, sorry. Yes, I no. did say, you guys don't listen to me. I did say both teams will score. You must listen. You were correct. But in fact, <laughs> I really did enjoy that match. It was quite a... Um, it was a balanced match throughout. It was quite balanced, you know? I agree with you. And I really did enjoy mm. seeing... Well, not throughout. First 35 minutes, Yeah, first 35, you started dominant. to see, exactly, yeah. And but, then only um, Spurs started to turn it slightly. And that own goal then gave um, the, the opposition then some type of spirit to really go in. So it was a beautiful match to experience. Obviously, um, you know, the one and only the one we trust on was there, shining as always. At some point, I posted Sorry, on WhatsApp boy. that it was a Son and Saka a match because wow, man, yeah, both no, of them really were Saka was in the mood. They were stellar, mm. yeah. Mm. Well, well, he always is. And unfortunately, uh, there are concerns that he might also be injured. So going to Bournemouth, we might be having an Arsenal that's without a Saka, without a Martinelli uh, okay. because of injuries. And mm-hmm. once again, they're going to be, well, with the North London derby, they didn't really travel. But mm-hmm. now they're going to travel to Bournemouth, which is like a two-hour, seven-minute, whether they're flying or driving, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And it's a Saturday kickoff yeah. in the afternoon. So games are coming in thick and fast. And I think the likes of your Spurs, Chelsea are not taking advantage of the fact that they don't have a lot to do. But I think the likes of your Spurs uh, 
and the teams that actually have uh, depth in their squads, mm-hmm. uh, the Brightons of this world, um, who just seem to like turn it up. Like they lost in the in the in the in the in the in the European game, but turned it up in in in, in the league. Mm. I agree. And uh, before we move on to that Brighton Aston Villa game, just a quick one: Arsenal still to be too strong for Bournemouth, even with the. I think with the fringe, and, and let me not call them fringe players, but the players that will likely be available for that fixture, Bournemouth, yeah, they come in patches, uh, but I think Arsenal are too clinical. Um, mm. They should be able to put Bournemouth to the sword. They should be able to. Narrow win, hey? Um, I think it's going to be a convincing two, so overs. 1.5 over. No, I'm saying 2.5. Sure, more than three goals yes. difference. That yes. is okay. interesting. Um, without, I mean, they have one one person that I think was is is Martini, like you've mentioned, is not going to be there. Um, Thomas, is it Thomas? Party, party, also party, not party. Be there. Trossard is not going to be there. Also, so well, obviously, by the time that um, you know, it could these could change these injuries, but I mean, these three players are not going to be in, and like you've mentioned, the other players are going to like be the Nketiahs of, of this world. Yes, Nketiah comes in, but in pieces, yeah, yeah. but also so not impressive. Like players you like know? Jorginho, who aren't going to be pressed mm. in the way that he was pressed by James Madison. Yes, at Bournemouth. Mm. Bournemouth aren't going to put a lot of pressure on Jorginho in there the same go. way that Spurs do. So Jorginho should manage fine against Bournemouth. Mm. Yeah, hence I'm going for a two point five. Over. And is an experienced okay. player. Yeah. So let's move on. We were talking about Brighton. Uh, they're facing off with Aston Villa, which could be a Champions League <laughs> comparison Oof. game. That one, the way these Oof. two are playing. Both good sides. Um, Brighton versus Aston Villa, guys. It's a tough one because at Villa Park, obviously Aston Villa are at home. But you can never write off Brighton. Yeah, uh, right. It's a one o'clock kickoff on a Saturday. First one, lunchtime. <laughs> Most teams actually hate lunchtime kickoffs. Um, I fancy Brighton. Um, they, like I said, they, 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 they have not been a flash in the pan. Yeah, they, they, they've proved themselves time and time again they that have. they are not where they are by chance. They are there because they perform week in week out. Uh, the Mitomas of this world. Now um, the addition of uh, Fatih Ansu. Uh, Ansu Fati, yes. Um, I mean, you have, we saw in the United game the other week, you have a well-back who can just come out of nowhere and score for you. Mm. Um, even, what's his name? Uh, I actually wanted to speak about him last week. Him coming into the side, and he had been injured for quite some time, actually. Uh, what's his name, is man? Um, I'll tell you now. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? In the midfield, what's his name? Um, 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 I think he's from Ghana. Um, help me, help me, help me remember the name. Help me Carlos remember. Baliba. No, 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 no. Um, the Cameroonian. No, 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 Midfielder no, no. for Go Brighton? On. Yes, midfielder for Brighton. Midfielder for Brighton. I'll tell you his name now. Uh, now the name is Okay, gone. we'll remember him. The name is Let's gone. Move. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like, yeah, him coming back into the side uh, really uh, provides a lot of depth. Uh, I mean, you've got cases where... You're talking about the defender, Lamptey, Terry Lamptey. Lamptey, sorry, the defender, Ghana yes, Lamptey, yes, 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 yes. Uh, he proved very instrumental when he came through uh, in the other game. So they do have depth. Um, I mean, they still have the likes of Ferguson, who doesn't even start games of late, but you know he's a quality striker. So, yes, Aston Villa are good. Yep. I'm not going to deny that. But I'm going to give this one to Brighton. No, Sam, yeah, I agree with you, I think. I think, but... Yeah, they're away, actually. Hey, Len? No, the Seagulls, whether home or away, uh, they just, it looks like they seem to just know how to put teams to the sword. Yeah. They okay, were quick, away against quick, United. Quick. For my sleep, I'm going to oh, go I'm for sorry. a draw. Okay. Draw? Uh, Brighton win. Um, it's going to be Brighton. And by the way, just very quickly, last five matches when they play away at home, um, play away from home, Brighton have won the last three matches, only lost two. Who, do, who were the two they lost against? Um, they lost against Chelsea and they lost against um, Aston Villa. They are fact. teams that hey? against Chelsea. They lost the lost <laughs> away game against Aston Villa. They <laughs> lost. Yeah. <laughs> so lost that's that. interesting. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to move on swiftly to the game of the weekend. A yes. focus game. Definitely a game to focus on. We've got Tottenham Hotspur versus Liverpool at the Tottenham Hotspur yes, Stadium. So the, these are the sort of lineups that we saw um, 
over the weekend for Spurs in the North London derby and for Liverpool in their game against West Ham. Mm -hmm. Two big games last weekend. Now these sides meeting up for another big fixture, both playing well. Um, and I expect this to be how they set up. Uh, Liverpool with a 4-3-3 coming away with Diaz, Salah and Nunes up front. Mm -hmm. uh, Curtis Jones, uh, Alex McAllister and Sabozlai in the midfield three who are quite interchangeable with McAllister hanging ever so slightly behind the mm -hmm. other two. Andy Robertson, Joe Gomez, Virgil van Dijk and uh, Joel Matip and Alisson in goal. Of course, uh, Joe Gomez taking the place of the difference maker I would have seen happening in this game, Trent Alexander-Arnold. His quality of passing from fullback, yeah. outrageous. Uh, looking at Spurs, Vicario had a terrific first 30 minutes yeah. against uh, Arsenal. Could be a difference maker. Uh, Romero had a difficult game. Van der Ven was excellent. Udogi, uh, some mistakes at the back, but very good but going not forward. Bad, yeah. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Pablo Poro, who has been a sensation. But for me, the real standouts uh, is ahead of this defensive four of uh, Spurs, where Yves Bissouma and Saar, they have yes. been phenomenal at regaining possession and exactly. then playing it forward. Yeah, no, look, I agree with you. The Mbesuma and Sa have been really, really brilliant. And I'm mm -hmm. interested to see how they're going to connect uh, with Madison because he's been a stellar as well to watch. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, not to mention Kulusevsky has been great and so has Song Heung Ming. Mm. So I think that's going to be really interesting. Um, I think what Spurs lack about, uh, behind that back four, um, they're really making up for in the quality slightly further ahead. Mm -hmm. So it just and you've got a situation whereby I think you look at the setup, uh, which we could argue it's a four three three. We can argue that it's a four two one three, depending so, on how so you it's look a, at it. Definitely a four two three one for mm -hmm. Spurs. That is definitely what you're seeing here. Is so, a back four, a defensive midfield two, three ahead three, of them and, and song. One. Yes. standing alone up front. Yeah. That's actually a very interesting point that you bring up because how different is a 4-2-3-1 versus a 4-3-3? Well, not that different if you look at Spurs from a defensive side. They switch to a 4-4-2 when they're defending deep against the side who's going to hold mm. possession. You see these banks of four where you've got the back four being supported by Bisuma, Saar, Johnson and Kulusevski with Madison hanging around slightly further back to pick up any loose balls mm -hmm. and Song holding up against the defensive two. So when you're defending, you've got this 4-4-2. Four, four, then you get Liverpool, who will be pushing quite a few players forward. Sabuslai will be given a lot of license yeah. to join mm -hmm. the attack. Curtis Jones, McAllister sort of hanging around to pick up loose balls, playing in that Pirlo-esque position of picking up loose balls and then moving on. And the fullbacks will be joining in, leaving responsibility on Matip and Van Dijk to wrap up. The danger that uh, if we look at this uh, setup, especially if uh, you're going to get Liverpool going on the attack, uh, mm -hmm. Liverpool is a team that loves ball position. Yeah. We've mm -hmm. seen how they play. It's the ability for Madison to either pick up a loose ball where he is or be opened up by either uh, one of the two defensive Holding, midfielders. Yeah, yes. Bissouma and Saar. Yes. That'll be key. And knowing Son, uh, very speedy player, very clever yeah. player. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm Spurs, I have no worries in I mean, defending very deep so that the likelihood is that I'm most likely going to hurt Liverpool on the counter-attack. And that's that's sort of like uh, Tottenham watch space game. Like they always have Son waiting for those uh, those chances, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. You know, and they will always catch you in the counter. If you look at the goals that he scores, I mean, even the one that he scored, I mean, yeah, he, he, yeah, he but read those spaces Jorginho, so well. Jorginho gave up position possession yeah. to James Madison, but I'm saying like he reads those spaces so well, so well, you know, and he could harm them. But what would also be interesting in that game. It's uh, Ped, is it per, Pedro Perro? Poro. Pedro Poro. Poro. Yes. Yeah. Uh, his battle with uh, Diaz there because they're all, they're both very fast, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Liverpool likes playing on the side with Salah and, and Diaz coming in from the, from, the, from the flanks, you know. So just one more look tactically before we move on back to our home base, the PSL. 
Um, this is how the funny thing looking at this again is that this is how Liverpool defended against West Ham with also switching to a 4-4-2 when defending. So you've got the back four of Robertson, Van Dijk, Matty and Gomez being supported by Diaz, who's got the most legs in him mm -hmm. with Salah aging a little bit, yes. maybe not able to come up back and help defend and then still be effective in attack. Mm -hmm. uh, Sabuzlai, McAllister and Curtis Jones make up the four and then Salah and Nunes up front. So that, that mm. number 10 that James Madison is using to support Song that we saw in the earlier graphic, yeah. the 4-3-3 three, three changes that where the three midfielders none of them are attacking in in the defensive s space. So that's sort of the difference between a 4-2-3-1 and the 4-3-3 is in the 4-2-3-1, when you're defending, the wingers come back and support the defense mm. where, and one of the midfielders stays and supports the lone striker. Yeah. Mm. But in, this, in the 4-3-3, you've got one of the wingers comes back and one of the wingers acts as a second forward along with the other striker. So that's quite an interesting look at how these teams are deploying a 4-3-3 and a 4-2-3-1 with a 4-4-2 when they're defending. Mm. Yeah. So let's move Predictions? on. Predictions? We haven't done a prediction for this match. We don't want to. It's going to be too tough to call. <laughs> uh, ah. You'll be tempted to call a draw, um, but with Spurs at home, I might edge ever so slightly in their favor just because Liverpool are so much stronger at home yeah, and they've looked really impressive in their home games. I feel for them to carry that same home form away to a very good Spurs side, I think they might come ever so slightly yeah, short. Yeah, I call a win for Spurs as well. Uh, Liverpool win? Yeah, it's a Liverpool win for me. They've mm. just been unstoppable. You know, you score first, you know how many times have teams scored first against Liverpool. They just come back and and grab that win. So I think they are on a very, very good run. And I don't think Spurs are going to stop. I think this is where Spurs are going to lose their first game. Yes, Do you guys actually, think can we also then, something that I've also noticed, if you don't want to really put your head on the block, um, you can also then say that Liverpool will not score less than two games because um, two um, goals because in the last three encounters they've had, in fact, the last um, yeah, five matches, they have not scored anything less than two. So you can also then look at that aspect. I was going to say, do you think, uh, looking at Liverpool now and mm. almost like the run of form that they've been on, mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's not typical classic Jürgen Klopp rock and roll football that he came with and literally just bulldozed teams with. Yeah, yeah. But he's starting to win games. There was a point where I thought that, you know, the Klopp of old is coming to... I don't want to say fruition per se, because remember he was at uh, Borussia Dortmund yeah, yeah. trajectory and then things just fell apart. Plateaued a bit. And then he left Liverpool trajectory, winning the Champions League, winning the league, and then things almost like went down. That's why they didn't even finish in the top four uh, from last season. Mm -hmm. But this season, they look like, yeah, like uh, alongside Spurs and Arsenal and Man City, and City. They are the big candidates to actually make it top or finish even. top four. Yeah, they're reju rejuvenated, and that team uh, they look more they look more hungrier than ever before. You know, they I look think, younger and fresher as well. Yes, they are fresh. I mean, he had some tight legs as well. You know, your Henderson, James Milner. You know, I mean, bringing in new players also helps. And I think um, I think they're gonna they're gonna be up there this season with the with the with the, with the rest. You know. Okay, so let's move on very swiftly because we're almost out of time already. Um, let's go around the world with Tepi Worldwide. One quick topic from around the world. Um, something very interesting. So um, we do have, um, the, we have um, the African Cup of Nations, which will be happening um, in January. I mm. believe it's going to be from the, first, the 11th of January until the 12th of January until the 11th of Feb. And we have been put in a pot. We have four different pots. And the pods go according to FIFA um, um, rankings. And we are finding ourselves in part three. So, you know, the first part would comprise of, please just double check for me, there's Super, um, super Lin or Super Sa. Oh, wow. Um, so, <laughs> super Lin, ah. <laughs> if you guys had a baby. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, but um, the first um, part would comprise of the likes of um, 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 Egypt, um, would have uh, Morocco, it would have... Um, Tell me if I'm correct there. Egypt, Morocco, it would have so pot one, Senegal. Yes, it would pot have one is uh, Egypt, Morocco, There we go. It's Senegal, Ivory Coast, Morocco, Senegal, Senegal Tunisia, Algeria, Algeria and Egypt. It, yes. There we 
there we go, right? And um, obviously we have part two, part three, part four. Now what happens is that you cannot then play teams that are in the same part as you. So we might find ourselves having to play, obviously, you know, uh, a Senegal up there, or we might have to play, you know, a part two team, and that would be Bo, um Nigeria, Cameroon, Mali, Burkina Faso, Which is also Faso, like Ghana, Ghana. India, Congo. there we go. So what I'm asking you guys is that if all else fails, which part would you say we should be the most afraid of right now? Part one. Mind you, we have part three also. Yeah, look, I think uh, you mentioned part one. Your Morocco's is there. Yes. Mm. Uh, Nigeria. Well, I'm not really scared of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's part two. Uh, That's two. Senegal, yeah. Egypt, Algeria. Algeria. All those teams yeah. that I mentioned when we were doing. Remember? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, so I think it's definitely so, for me, so you'll be facing only one of those. That's yeah. the positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, and as well, you know, if you want to win that uh, competition, you Anything need to play the, against the best. Mm. You need to prove yourself against the best. You you can't you can't hope to meet uh, Namibia or Botswana. You know. As things stand, <laughs> hey, you, you must be afraid of Namibia. I'm going to repeat this thing, exactly. <laughs> and they are in port four, by the way, yes. of whom we can likely actually yes. face off against them. Yes. No, definitely. Look, I mean, they can cause an upset at any given day. But uh, what I'm saying is in order to win this competition, you have to play against the best. It helps you as well to gain confidence. Yeah. Well, you know, imagine if we play against Egypt and we win the first game. And we've well, beaten them before. We've beaten them before. Guys, that was Around the World with Tepi Worldwide. Thank you so much. Powered by Betway. Get more, way more. more. Yes. Use the... Uh, affiliate code onside za when joining the betway app as a new user len moleko let's bring it home <laughs> uh you're wearing a pirate shirt what's going on i, I don't know everything he, okay at home according to the ballers question. according to the ballers len wearing a chief shirt on saturday is what brought them the bad luck that <laughs> ended up in the loss can't agree <laughs> sign 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 no 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 um, you know we exchange these things and i'm sorry if i brought bad luck but speaking of which um speaking about the bad luck night was not my fault there were Referring decisions that were very questionable. Yeah, no, definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, people were very not happy the with the sorry. officiating of the game. Mm. So it was not me. It was the referee who was not watching the game properly and making wrong decisions. But um, big ups to Chiefs. I think they 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 showed they showed um, progress. Progress. Uh, I mean, even in midweek uh, in their game against Sikukuna United, they went a goal down, managed to come back. Uh, and win by two goals to one. So big ups to it's 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 on the up. Yeah, there's he's, co he's cooking. He just is co cooking Mukhod, and it takes long to you know. <laughs> yeah, but then people would have left by the time that Mukhod was ready to eat <laughs> to be eaten. But you yeah. need to but you need to have patience because uh, Rome was not built in a day. Speaking of Rome and patience, Orlando Pirates right now haven't won a match in how many um, occasions? Well, they lost against. Uh, well, they drew. They lost away in. Sundance. No, they lost away in Botswana. In Botswana, and lost against Sundance. Sundance mm -hmm. and lost against, against Stelis. But then again, the Stelis game, it was a hit and a miss yeah. because you lost. Yet you're gonna find yourself in the final. It's still a loss. Yeah, it's still three in a row, which is worrying, you know. And um, look, I think uh, tonight when we played that team from Botswana on the second Johnny, leg, yeah. Uh, we should redeem ourselves. We need to to show that we are one of the best in Africa, and uh, we need to progress to to the next round of uh, CAF Champions League. Yes, and quite something also that I've noticed, which is quite frustrating, and I think they need to do something about it. If you look at the log standings right now, London Parents obviously is going to be slightly lower. I believe they're in 11th position, but please double check for me because they've not obviously played many matches and their matches keep on getting postponed because they have so many other obligations. And what is also, um, you know, they need to be wary of is that the moment they do get the opportunity to play these matches, they are going to be playing under immense pressure. No, and definitely. Coming you know from... What I mean? You know, so it, game on hand be, does not equate yeah. to points. Yeah. There we go, you know. So they need to be careful of that because they are, number one, obviously it is exhausted because of all the continental show pieces and other obligations, but they need to just somehow manage that because that could be the detriment of them when it comes to the look, um, to DSTV Premiership. And locally... We, we just need to do all against... Is it running? FC? Running. Yeah. Galaxy. Yeah. Yes. Galaxy. So uh, uh, the interesting thing about it is... Uh, well, a lot of their games are pretty much postponed because, mm. like, yep. there's Kev that's happening. Uh, the one game that, like, we can literally throw a stone to that's very close is the final of the MTN 8 against uh, the Sundowns. Why do all finals go to Durban? 
Look, Panyazal is if you actually explained it, you know, because they were bidding for for Gauteng. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They were bidding for Gauteng to to host, you know, yes. and um, you mentioned that you know Deben, um, they just have a better bid in terms of expenses. Apparently, they pay for for teams accommodation, you know, escorts, you know, land. Oh, that's the nice. blue lights. <laughs> blue, blue. Not yeah. those escorts. <laughs> yeah, not Hopefully the, uh, nobody escorts, gets you know. knocked out. You know, so, and um, <coughs> you mentioned that in Jobek you pay for those things and I think you get the stadium for free, you know, as well, so. And a world-class stadium at that. But my rant is, actually the last time I was at Moses Mabida Stadium. This is a Lin Moleko rant brought to you by Bedway. Bedway. Get way more. <laughs> <laughs> my rant is actually, the last time I was at Moses Mabida, uh, I think it was during the final of the MTN 8, the one Orlando Pirates won. I think they were playing Amazulu. Last season. Yes, it was last season. The stadium looked like half of it was being constructed, but half the construction was not done. It just did not have that thing that Land. Moses Mabida usually mm. used to have. And I get all the stuff about accommodation, wara wara, mm. and all of that. But in some ways, all right, I think it's unfair for two teams that are from Gauteng mm. to be playing in Durban. If the accommodation is free and their travel is only covered... Only accommodation is only 23 guys, Muna. But their even travel, so, were we not the ones who were saying that certain matches need to go to other parts of the country? Exactly. So, we're, we're contradicting ourselves now. Exactly. We are, yeah, but why Durban all the time? But why? That's it's, the it's like, that's a thing because... But we know why. We just answered why. So, let's move on <laughs> swiftly <laughs> as we're out of time. Uh, quick one. Tonight, Swallows, Amazulu. Uh, swallows. Yeah, no, Swallows, I think Compella is, he's also cooking. I don't know if he's cooking Mukhodo or what, or Mangrina. And he's doing push-ups. Yeah, no. Okay, tomorrow, Cape Town Derby. Cape Town City versus Cape Town Spurs. Ah, first. straight up. Is Bartlett still a coach? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> if you can ask, is, he, is he still a coach? He is. Uh, then it's Cape Town City. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think. The shade of it all. My, 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 my thing with it is, I think, if Sean Bartlett loses the game against City, I think it's going to be tickets for him. Also taking into account, there's a coach who's very well-traveled that's hovering in South Africa right now because he came back from Midland where he used to be. Mm, yes. I heard. Mm. Yeah, no, you never know, eh? And yeah. Dance is also unemployed. There's actually quite a number of coaches. Look, who I can... mean, if, if Midendorp takes over, I'm just saying, if he takes over, he can just rope in Butler as his assistant. He has done it before. I was going to say, why is it that there isn't actually like a very experienced campaigner like uh, Dan Dance? I mean, we saw now recently that Kaiser Chiefs roped in uh, Kevin Johnson to be yes. part of the technical side. But that's what I was saying. Sorry for interrupting, uh, Len. Last week when we spoke about Sean, and I did mention that he's not n really used to being like the only coach or the head coach. So he needs someone who's going to kind of, you know... But he's been a coach. I mean, he's been assistant. a coach at... Uh, no, no, he's been a head coach for Golden Arrows as well. But then what happened assistant. to him? He got them promoted and what happened to him? Out. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. But I'm saying he's got mm. experience as a hot coach. Yeah, but I think he still needs someone there with him. But his time was cut short and so is ours. We <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, Marco. I love it. Guys, <laughs> introducing... One of my absolute very favorite people in South African football. It was an absolute honor having a chat to him. It was. This is an on-site ZA special interview with the one and only Mr. Coach Gavin Hunt. Ballers, welcome to Onside ZA, brought to you by Betway, where you get way more. Join the Betway app and use the affiliate code Onside ZA, and it'll help us out, it'll help you out, uh, and it'll just let Betway know that we sent you. This is a very exciting podcast for us today. We've got one of my favorite coaches, one of the most decorated coaches in South African football currently today, Coach Gavin Hunt. Thank you for joining us, Tippi. Round of applause for Gavin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank You're you. so welcome. And thank you for having joining me. us as a ghost uh, super sub for the day, Tippi Wildwide. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, so much to talk about. And yeah. just before we started recording, we were talking about the modernization of football. And I'd actually like to start there. Um, for me, we were discussing, you brought up uh, transition being a new name for counterattack. Mm -hmm. You brought up 
uh, the idea of a press or high press being closing, closing down. down. Yeah. So it's just fancy new words. And counter press. Uh, <laughs> well, when you lose a ball, we need to you need to close down quickly to, to win it back. Yeah. So I think what happens in in, in world fo- what's happening in world football mm-hmm. uh, as the younger generation have come through, I think they try to sound intelligent and trying to make out like the the invent in the game. Meanwhile, it's all words that are, are basically been used a long, long time ago uh, in, in, in another version, Count, all the words you've just used. Yeah. So I think people – and and, and, and there's, this, there's this thing that goes on in world football now that people need to sound intelligent before games where they talk – when they get interviewed or, or after pre- games. Yeah, yeah pre-match, I think, I think, yeah. I think that's – it's it's, it's it's something that really gr- makes me upset because don't sound intelligent. Just let's get on with the game and, mm. you know, and, um, and don't diverge too much into – it's like you'll get coaches talking about the opposition team. Well, they've got so and so and so and so and so. And so. Well, what are you saying? Like you, you work harder than me, or you know, or mm. we don't study. And people t- are making facts like, oh, they work so hard. Well, we all work hard. Mm-hmm. It's a twenty four seven job. But I don't go tell people that I work hard. Why? And people think because you spend hours and hours and hours at um, at the club that you're working so hard. Meanwhile, you know, you have got to fold down your arm walking across the car park. You know, what I mean, doing nothing. So it's not a, you know, everybody works hard at the game. Everybody that's involved in the game, like myself, we're on it twenty four seven. We watching clips. We 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 doing all the things behind the scenes, trying to set our team up. Uh, you know, with within our with what we've got to try and be uh, successful. And I think that's the true part of the modernization. Well, I don't have to of tell people about it, right? And I think there's too many coaches today that tell people about it. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll rattle on about the opposition. They do this. They do that. Um, well, if they're doing that, what are you doing at training Monday to Friday to try and play against that? And then they'll tell you, well, we know how they play. But you, you play against them on Saturday, they played exactly the way the week, the week yeah. ago <laughs> against the previous team. So how clever are you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I mean, obviously, there's always the issue of, of what personnel you've got to be able to adapt well, to that, it, right? I don't care who you are. I mean, mm. the best coaches in the world have got the best players. Yeah. Bottom line, because uh, it's easier. Pep Guardiola goes to Man City, has a problem with two fullbacks, he buys 100 million, Walker and Mendy, solves his problem, wins the league the next year. Yeah. So, you know, people mustn't be forget uh, that certainly by buying the best players, it, it, you know, you sometimes you can get your mother or your sister to, or your daughter to run the team. You know, that's how easy it is. But you still need to have good training sessions. Of course. To challenge the players and to keep them on their toes and keep them out and all these type of things. But the most important thing uh, in a football club when you at got the top players, you need to manage up, and managing up means expectations and 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 those type of things. So, but when you got the best, you can you can do what you like. You can play anyway. Three five two four four three three four. You can do what you like, and then people think you're very clever, but you're not because you know you 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 should be winning more comfortably mm. by having the best players. Or sometimes you're playing against a team you got a hundred million rand budget or hundred million rand pound budget, and the other one's got a five million pound budget. And you're only winning one nil. So how good are you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so you've mm. got to be very careful. People get sucked in. And, and and with the game growing like it is with social media, everybody's talking about it. You've got to be so careful. And the, and the guy in the street gets sucked in. Oh, how beautifully they play. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, give me that team. I'll show you how beautiful we'll play. Or give a lesser manager who's been around many, many years, like a Sean Dyche, like mm. Sam Allardyce. Oh, they're long ball merchants. Well, they're survival, they're, they're survival yes. artists. Let's swap the coaches around. You, let Pep go down to Stoke and let Sean Dice go up to it's Man City. Yeah. And let's see what type of how he, how he does. So don't criticize people until you've walked in their shoes, Right. I always say. And be very careful about the style of football. Oh, they play such beautiful football and blah, 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 blah. You know, the bottom line is we need to win and we need to survive here. And you've got 100 million I've got 5 million. Yeah. So I can only get Joe Soap, because that's my budget, but you can get uh, the Rolls Royce, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So you got to be very careful how we judge coaches, how we judge styles of teams, how we judge – everybody's a romantic. Everybody mm. thinks their girlfriend's the best-looking girlfriend, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're quite ugly, you know what I mean? Wow. And the point, <laughs> the point I'm trying to say is yeah. mm-hmm. we – the way we play is suits us and we think it's a beautiful style of football – to the to, to but to what we got, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. everybody thinks oh our, our girlfriend's the most beautiful, 
but really are they you know what i mean you know let's, um, let's have a look at what we got here you know? speaking of which where which, which stage would you say you are right now with matatanza would you say that you are at a winning stage or are you saying that you are survival mode as it stands uh, I, th i think it's a bit of both because we are never building a team and enhancing the team okay so what does that mean so we've got a good player like maseko last season I'm just I'm just talking about my first I'm talking about my stint now I won't even go back to my first stint yeah. when we won the league three times we should have won the league seven or eight times in a row easy mm -hmm. easy we would have won it seven eight times in a row by by strengthening our team we mm -hmm. weak we kept weak so for the first year we weakened the second year we weakened the third year we weakened so you're we still winning the league but about the fourth year my legs are out they cut my legs off now now I'm on my knees mm -hmm. now I'm saying right now we need a box clever Then we'll try and go in the cups and become, I think we came sixth or seventh in my fourth year or something. Because my knees are taking that. Where clubs in South Africa, like the opposition down the road, they they win the league, but they keep strengthening. Yeah. So, and the rest of us, we can't survive. So you boxing, you know, we're punching in the dark here. Um, and and that's, the, that's the nature of what's happened. So right now, I've had a good side last year. I got rid of three of my best players. Coming third, a TT, I'm just talking this now, Patrick went to Pirates, and Maseko, who's at uh, Sundowns. So we weakened our team. Yes, we brought more players in, but, but. We, if we kept them and brought the ones, we we would have been getting better. But so we go down again to, to come up again. So it's pretty much, you know, uh, that type of survival mode in, and trying to, mold and trying to look to sell the next one <laughs> that's where we are yeah you, you so we sort of... so we in that type you know that type of space um and, that, and that's very sad but we cannot compete financially with a club mm. that's spending like they spend and then what we spend i mean it's the bottom line bottom line yeah so in order to hold on to those those real top top quality players it's an impossibility if you're not able to when someone match comes the and sort throws of money salaries, at you like that yeah You cannot turn around. We've actually won the league already, to be fair. We've won Thanks. the league with a transfer fee. Do you understand what I'm yeah. trying to say? So, uh, but the, the, the bottom line is our team is weaker because we miss his pace, Tapello, uh, Patrick's cleverness. I mean, he's done great now for Pirates. Um, he came as a left back, come left side player. I've moved him to a sort of a 10 position. Now he's number 10 for Pirates in, in, in eight months, six months. So, TT came in as a, you know, good central back, and now he's like the main guy at, at Kaiser Chiefs. So, you know, you, uh, and, and then your man in your street criticizes you and says, "Ah, you're useless, and you lose a few games because we're not going to have the consistency because we're building a new team all the time." I mean, we got, I mean, if you take our, if you take our team that played last night from last year, so I'll just go through the team in my in my mind: one, mm. two, three, four. Five, six, seven new players. We came third last year and I had seven players who didn't play last year. Now they're playing in our team this year. I mean, who does that? So it's, it's, it's a tough business, I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and I always say, you know, look, I've, I've earned my stripes, but gee whiz, you, you, you keep earning your stripes every year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a tough ask. And of course, uh, yeah. that actually will bring me to one of the questions. Mm. Um, of course, a lot of pressure on this job in its own right mm. and a lot of competition in the space, but should Safa come calling for the Bufana Bufana job, would it be something that would interest you? I've always Sometime said, in the future, I'm not yeah, necessarily... Yeah, I've always said a national team job should be managed by an older person. Why? Because you, you're not a coach. You're not a Bufana coach. You're, you're a Bufana selector. Mm. And that's a big difference in that, in selecting and coaching. You can put... You can select and then put a structure together. This is the way we're going to play because this is the way I feel we're going to be successful or, 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 or you know, we can we can improve. So, because you get to play two days. And what yeah. do you, are you know, how much mm. coaching do you do? We can do a little bit of shadow play, a little bit of organization, a little bit of patterns of play. But they must come equipped from their class. I've, I've selected them because mm. I know by watching them, he can do the job I want, he can do what I want and blah, 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 blah. So you need an older guy. I think, because he's not really going to have much time to work on the training ground. Where I am now in my age, at my age, uh, I feel um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm older, <laughs> but I would say like, um, yeah, I'd like to put my foot in the water there a little bit. I'd like to have a go at that. I've always, you know, the last five, 10 years I've been saying no. I mean, 2010 I went for the interview. Mm. It was me, Steve, um, uh, 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 Pizzo, and then all of a sudden out of left field I see Carlos Pereira come around the corner. I mean, what chance, you know what I mean? So we, and we had to do 45-minute presentations and they never asked me once about how we're going to play or what we're going to do. It was all about agents and and uh, oh, okay. handle the media and all that crap. Especially so, at that time, right? Yeah, so, so. I was, I was, then after 2010, went for another interview at Safa House. Um, you know, people interviewing me, you know, I was like, Yo, you know. It's not going to be a way. Was, you, know, you felt uh, the knowledge of the, the well, game I wasn't quite that, there? I felt that, uh, you, know, you know, I was, uh, the people interviewing me, it was like, I was like, She's some you know where you know where they come from type of thing, and I had a whole presentation about how we should play and how we shouldn't play, and because I think there's, I think if you look at our national team over the last since Clive's gone, even since Clive Gordon came in, try to go again, you know, but I think we've lost a way, you know, and I think <clears throat> have we got the players? <clears throat> I think there's certain players that are not getting picked that should get picked because they'll give us certain attributes mm -hmm. which I think they don't have. I think we're a very, uh, what's the term, weak team in terms of physicality. Mm. We need a little bit more physicality. If you look at that 95s, through that period, 95, 96, 98. There was a lot of physicality, physicality in that Physicality, when you went yeah. to the World Cup, we, we won the Nations Cup, we, we qualified for the World Cup, and then you got fired. I mean, oh, what a joke that yeah. was. How do you get fired? Came to a Confed Cup, trying to play a few players, and then Clive got fired, and, and, and we had a great physicality about us. And our way of playing football was more based on that. But subsequently, it's changed. It's become more technical. Well, it's all this technical of, crap mm. now. And believe you me, when you go in Africa... Technical doesn't win a football you're game not over on there, its own. Because those are fights. And mm. what did we have in that team in, the, in the, that period? We had people who could fight and, you know, play. And then we had a few players, that the John Shoes, Doctors. These guys could play. Yes. You know, and they would win you games on a little turn and a flick here and... And then you had people who could tackle and, and, and do the – and I think we've gone away from that, you know. You need that balancing point of being able to any play football, the physicality. Any, any, any football team, mm. any football team, you know. Um, you So, you 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 know, we it's like I say to sometimes, like you can play teams and if we play head on head with them, they're going to beat us. But if you turn the game into a fight – They'll struggle. They'll struggle. And then we've got half a chance. Mm. So what does that mean? Uh, what's the famous words they use now? Uh, um Transitions and yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's the other ones? Counter pressing. Yeah, hard that press, counter press. That's yeah. basically what you you know. Yeah. Or, we're going to counter attack them. Transition. And we're going to physically make the game untidy. Mm. What does that mean? The ball's going to be up in the air. We're not going to play a football match with them because they're going to beat us. So let's not make a football match here. Let's. So we would practice that in the week a little bit. You know what I mean? So the ball's not going to go from goalkeeper to centre half, and we're going to build up here. There's no build ups here. You know we're going to. Get it up there and, and 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 make the game into a bit of a fight. So that's a game strategy on per day, where we'll go in with a strategy into Africa. No, no, we we're going to play the centre ball's going to go from the centre back and we're going to build up through the phases. The pitch is bumpy, it's lousy. You know, you're going to lose. You'll lose. lose. Yeah. Um, no. We, we talk about yes. winning ugly. Hey, Gavin. And uh, sometimes so it's good to win ugly. That's because you haven't got superior players. Yes. Yes. Do you understand? You get I understand that? completely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. For me, the greatest boxer was Floyd May Money Moneyweather, greatest yeah. boxer, mm -hmm. and he was a counter attacker. Yeah, he counter punched it. He never got hit. He just ran away the whole, whole and he came in box and he hit out. He would never have a toe to toe, -to -toe with you mm. because most boxers would beat him. Do you yeah, so he wasn't. Uh, what I love about what Floyd saying? Mayweather, and I, I get what you're saying completely. So he counter punched that. Out. If you're coming mm. up against the prime Barcelona side that has Messi, etc., in there. How, are you going to try so we and go, you? are we going to play with you? No, gonna you're going to get demolished. Uh, but if you turn it into so, a physical you know, match and make it difficult for exactly. them from a so, physicality so, so, standpoint. So we'll spoil the game, stop the game, yes. spoil it, stop them, turn them around. Frustrate them. Frustrate them. The clock is ticking. They get frustrated. They get they lose balance. They get undisciplined. The chance get yourself a chance on the counter the attack. But they'll mm. have 80% of the ball. Yeah. So we'll practice to play without the ball. But we'll play. So and take your chances from so set pieces and counter in, in attacks. In football yeah. matches, uh, you can do that. Boxing, you can do that. Rugby, you can't. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, so most sports, you know, you've you got to look at what you're playing against, I think. You know what I'm saying? You know. Mm. I completely agree. Tip, you had something you wanted to ask. Sorry. Yeah, um, you had spoken about, you know, if you go continental, sometimes from a physicality aspect, we are lacking. But I'm just going to switch it up a little bit. Um, after the sale of Budweiser, obviously there was a time when you were on the market yourself as a coach. Many bowlers would like to know why is it that we did not then look for opportunities, you know, continentally further up or even, you know, going as far as um, well, the Arab nations. Mm -hmm. And did you try also? So in the discussions behind the scenes, a club like, because you'll be chopping around now, a club yeah, like yeah. Bidvis Vis, we didn't have the budget to go on a couple of, on two fronts. I was told in a nice way, in a very nice way, mm. we need to get out of this, these situations. So, because it's costing us a million rand a game here. We don't yeah. have the financial budget. So, we were dominating on the local scene. So, when you get a club that dominates, like Mamelodi Sundowns, they can afford and they can afford yeah. to go on the continent and go three days earlier and stay in the better hotels and, 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 mm -hmm. and fly uh, um, um, business. Uh, no, 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 um, charters. Mm. Oh, these clubs fly charter levels. They fly charter, so, so that you're not. I, I'll give you an example. Plants, yeah. So I was a bit of this. We played a team called Harua yes. in Guinea, okay, yes. in Conakry. I was at Vitz. Twenty-seven hours it took us to get there. So we flew from here, Dubai, nine hours. Dubai, back ten hours, and the transit twenty-seven hours. A year later, I go to Kaiser Chiefs. Right, we, we draw Harua in Conakry. Mm -hmm. Okay. We go charter eight hours. Just like that. So Big difference. He, 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 there's no comparison. Charter, passport controls, done in the on runways, um, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Big difference. Yeah, definitely. Big difference. So if a club's can afford to do that, they're, 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 they're getting there, getting back. Because I remember we played in Kanakri, we played, um, it was on the – Saturday night or something. On the Tuesday or the Wednesday, we were in Durban away game. So we got back here on Thursday, back to, to Johannesburg. Then we had to get a plane Friday, 27 hours, play, go there, then come back and play next midweek on Wednesday again. So a club like Bidvis Wits, and nowadays the league helps uh, the teams that play in Champions League. Okay, good. N nowadays, now more, more so. They'll, they'll spread it a bit more. Then you were sort of, I mean, I was at Wits, we played. Chipper in East London on a Wednesday night, and we were playing Al Ahli on Saturday night. That's crazy. In Egypt, okay? Mm. So you get back here Thursday, went home, changed our bags, uh, Friday, uh, Thursday night on the plane, got there Friday morning, had a little session, played Saturday. Playing Saturday, just like that. Yeah, you're playing Al Ahli, 70,000 people. That's not a joke. But there's Vits, we've got 2,000 people. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we draw, you know, we lose. Uh, we beat them here and, and we drew there and we lost in the, over the two legs. So if you got the financial, you can go on both fronts. And a club like Wits or even Supersport. Supersport, before I got you, made the, uh, the Confed Cup final. Yes. Four years ago. Almost got relegated. They should have got relegated. Because the focus was then on Confed. You can't do it. You yeah. can't challenge on two We don't fronts. have a squad. The squad depth is big. So yeah. if I look at my phone now, I've just seen a report now from the doctor. I've got another one out tonight. Tomorrow, mm. for Friday. Tyson Litsway is out. Concussed last night, right? We've got eight players out now. My squad is only 22. So eight times take 22. We get, so we'll have 15 or 16 on, on Friday night. Tomorrow I'm in a bus going to Port uh, I just arrived now from Port Elizabeth. From PE. Yeah, from PE. Uh, so I've, plus, I don't have, I've, I've got four centre backs out. So who plays centre backs? Sundowns, you, can, you know, you, mm. you've got more players. You know, you've got that suspension on your so, hands as well. You know, yeah. uh, there's no excuses. I'm just giving you reality, the facts. We can still win. You know what I'm saying? We can still win. I mean, and mm. of course, you're going to go there and try to do that. I'll do my best. We spoke about your time at Chiefs uh, lightly there, just in terms of your competing on the continental front. How badly affected was your time at Chiefs um, by that transfer ban? Well. I think I think what would happen when I went in there, um, they just come second by fifteen minutes. So I was quite surprised that Ernst got the bullet. I mean, I was sitting in a hotel for seven weeks 
in the Rosebank Hotel right behind you here. Mm-hmm. We sat in that hotel, COVID, for seven weeks. And in the seven, at the end, people were getting sold off. Uh, Hottos, uh, pirates, uh, this one was going there, this one was going there. And I was like, and they were all coming to me, the players. What do I think I should do? I said, well, I think that's the right club for you because I know they don't have much there. Or that's the right club for you. Go there, go there. To Bangwanari, uh and the other ones went to Sundowns. Tyson went to 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 Pirates, mm. um, and things like that. So, and then obviously this whole thing unfolded, and then Chiefs phoned me after they fired Ernst, which I thought was unbelievable how coming second like that. Um, and I went in there, and they said to me, "Right, what do you want to do?" I said, "Well, I think you need a few players, and this team needs to change." They fully agreed. They fully agreed with me. They said, "Listen." We can, we got this band, but we're going to support you this season, and by next season we'll we, we can overall the squad here a little bit. I said it needs an overall. There's a lot of players who you know who are on their last legs, not going to make it, uh, and you saw what happened at the end of the season, you know. Yep. And they fully agreed. Everybody agreed with me, and I thought, okay, well here we go. We didn't start great because there was a huge uh, thing hanging over them from losing the league. A lot of those players, and in when I got there. Norkovic, who was the top goal scorer, was out for six months. Kamabiliat, who was the second top goal scorer, broke his leg. And I had mm. Castro, who was running on one leg, to be fair. And that was it up front. We had nothing. And then obviously the defense were really holding on and needed a revival and needed a change. And, uh, the, you know, they, 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 wanted to, they wanted to do that. And I said, okay, I agree with you. And then we tried to sign, we signed. Uh, the ones that were left from Vitz, I said, well, take Clanty as a left back. They need a left back. Um, the head Reeve already was there. Um, we needed some centre backs. I told him we could have got Tyson Litzwire then, but he, you know, the Pirates obviously got in quicker. And we needed some midfield players. Anyway, cut a long story short. Yeah, we started, but what, I could see a gap here in the in the Champions League, and Chiefs have never qualified in a group in the history. And wow. never qualified in their history to get into a group. We had to play four games um, to get into a group. Uh, I can't remember the first game. The second, I know the second game was Petro Atletico home and away. So I thought, okay. I looked at our team. I looked at theirs. Anyway, we went there. We won 1-0. And we got into a group. So this is the first time Chiefs have ever been in. And when we got in the group, we had Aurora. We had, oh, I can't believe the te- oh, I can't remember some of the teams. Um, and we kept going. But we would come back domestically because I knew we had never had a team. We never had enough as well to go on mm, two fronts. Mm. So you focused on the, Euro- well, on I the thought, well, continental front. Because yeah. they, were, they were backing me. Well, that's what I thought. Mm. <laughs> and we weren't doing great in the league. We were 8th, 9th, 8th, 9th, 8th, 9th. Win one, lose one. Win one, lose one. Or draw, you know. And uh, But on the, in, in Africa, we were going well. So yeah. we had a discussion. No, no, just keep going. Do the best you can. Don't worry about the league this year. And obviously supporters when you're losing the league, mm. you know. And then I then then I'd say to my and I got told, rather come six and get out first round. So I was like, "This is guys, the Chiefs. This is what you're telling me. I don't believe in." And they were, "Yo, yo, 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 yo. Rather have a good domestic front and do well there." I said, "No, well, the cups. This is this is like it's an opportunity. It's a big us, opportunity then. for us. Mm. We can get to the final. And we'll go through here." And um, yeah, we got in the semi final. Uh, we beat Simba 4-0 there yeah? we lost 3-0 yeah, there easy, and we yeah. got into the semi-final. So that's basically two games away from a final. And we had um, Wyatt Casablanca who we beat here before. Mm-hmm. I beat him in the, well, when I was in charge, we beat him in the in the league because they were in our, in, our, in our group. We beat him. We lost there, beat him here. Um, and I thought we had a great chance. And then called me and said, sorry, you got to go. That was it. So I was disappointed because I've never been that far in my in my in my Champions League experience. I've mm-hmm. never been with a team that's had the, the resources to get that far because you need resources. There was potential. And you, the yeah. flights, yeah. The, 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 this and and I could feel just like we yeah man, and we we had a very old Chiefs team and a slow team, no pace. So when you play in Champions League, you need to be old, slow, and, and methodical because it's slow. The football's very slow there, mm. so it suited what we had. Do you understand? When yeah. we came domestically where it's 100 miles an hour, we never had any legs. We had no legs in the team. And that was my big thing. We had players who were on their last legs, which is understand that happens in football. And I was bringing the kids in. I brought Nagobo. 
هابي ماشياني ديرول ماشيكي كوني مس ااا ماسيكو on the wing I had like five or six of them they were all playing but I I needed them more in the PSL they went so we went yeah. to Africa I played all the big hitters and the, the main guys who obviously had no legs anymore and uh, they did well so it was it, it was a real bitter pill to swallow to because I felt let me go till the end. If you say, okay, we're not going to go with you next season, fair enough. But give me the two games, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just felt. And then, and, and you know, when they got to the final against Alakli, uh, you know, I put the TV on. I thought, don't watch it, you know, because. And then obviously the team had changed also completely from the way we set it up, you know, in Africa. Because you need to set up your team up totally different, different in Africa, you know. Yeah. Speaking of setting up a team, Gavin, I want to pass this over to you. I want to have a little chat about 4-4-2 versus 4-3-3 <laughs> versus 4-2-3-1. Of course, we mm. see a big trend towards 4-3-3 and 4-2-3-1 in particular now. The idea of 4-4-2 being dead, yet it's something that you're still um, prepared to take a shot at. I, I, I'll, I'll beg to differ on any... any, any um any football match, a well, well organized 4 4 2 team. I'm talking about a team that no, because you remember in 4 4 2 teams, you're going to sometimes, you, you're going to only really play off uh, one, two, maybe four lines. So it, you got to be very careful how you want to play it. You know, the old days where we always play two strikers and two wingers and, and you got overrun in midfield, it's very difficult. So you're, 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 your, your, one of your strikers or second striker needs to be have a little bit of. I prefer it, uh, one of the strikers to be more uh, both strikers to be striker mentality, mm. but one of them who likes to is a better footballer than. So he's able to fall back, collect yeah, the ball, and, and help make and, things happen. And, and you know, wingers also need to understand. Like in my day, they played in straight lines. You know what I'm saying? They didn't play in off the line, mm. uh, or come inside and play a little bit narrow and play a little bit wider, seeing the moments. And it's about seeing moments and trying to create good triangles all over the pitch in possession and trying to deny space in oppositions out of position. You know what I'm saying? And where do you want to hold your line? So it all depends on your pressing line. So if you want to really go high and press, how do you want to press? You know, do you really want to stop them pressing? Or do you want to come down a little bit and try and create space for us to go into a little bit more? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yes, going? I understand. And, and so, so we had an example last night. We were very high in the first half, mm -hmm. and we don't have enough technical quality to pick our way through the opposition. So I came in halftime, and the tech, a simple tactic: come back 15 meters. Let's bring them onto us a little bit more, mm -hmm. and we'll go into the space more. Do you understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? So and we did that, and we just look a different side. So those moments you've got to understand. And also when you look at the makeup of your squad, I feel if you've got a lot of financial clout, you can have different ways of playing, which I think a lot of teams around the world who've got the financial clout don't oh. have different ways. So we, so a Real Madrid at the moment don't have a Benzema. Sorry. Yes. No, no problem. They don't have a Haaland. Mm -hmm. They don't have, um, I'm trying to think, big strikers who they can throw on when the ball. So they lose to Atletico Madrid on, on, on Sunday, on Saturday night. Because Atletico mm -hmm. plays so differently to the rest of the La Liga. Yes, pitches, and, 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 so and, and but when the game adapt. changes and we, and we dominant, we've got you back. Because what is football? The bottom line is, don't let any coach tell you any different. It's where we want to play and where we want to allow you to play. That's it's so it. simple. Yeah. Do you understand? What, yes. Completely. So if I'm playing rugby, I want to play in your half. I don't want you to play in my half. Because then things happen. But in football, in sometimes football, it's ideal to play in your yes, own half. Yes, but you got to be. But if you're a good side, if you're a good side, I want to play in your half. Yes, I don't want to let you out your half. But the only way you're going to get out is with a long ball, which you got to be really accurate to get out. So I'm saying to you is, I'm going to play, in and I'm a good side because I got money now. Yeah, I can I can get the best players. You're not coming out your half. But when I'm saying I look at your team, I look at my team, and you got better players than me, and I'm thinking, okay. It's not a negative thing. It's not a, mm. You just better. You got a few better because you got you pay ten times more than me, or five times more than me, or hundred times more than me. Um, and 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 we need to be very clever and 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 in our, in our thinking and clear. And you got to have humbleness. 
when you play football and you're better than me, you've got to be humble. So you've got to say to yourself, okay, we're not going to play with the ball here. We're not going to have it much. But I'm telling you now, we can still make us a good contest. Now, all co coaches will be listening to this and say, oh, he's talking crap. Let's have a go at them. I'm telling you now, we're going to get beat here. In, 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 and we'll get picked apart here. They'll pick us, they'll pick us apart, you know. Mm -hmm. We've seen it happen before in the past where uh, good Liverpool sides historically struggled at Stoke or Crystal Palace or Wigan at certain stages of their time. Yeah. And it's from clever tactical coaching yeah. where you decide we're either going to defend deep, hit on the you know, counter people, people love People love these optimist guys. They'll say, oh, no, we're going to attack them. We're going to have a go at them. I swear to God, we'll see where you end up at the end of the league. Sometimes be realistic. You know, you got to be, and you got to be, you got to be humble. Mm. You know, so I, with all my years in the football, I still remain humble. I still remain, yes, you know, we we prepare our team well for the occasion, knowing where I'm going, the ground, the pitch. So you know, uh, you know, and these type of things, and I think humbleness in football sometimes is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, keep people on a very even keel. Let's keep it simple. You know what I mean? Let's keep ourselves. We What's gone is gone. Let's, you know, we got to do it again. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and if you can get that recipe into your team, you'll have a very good team. Now, Gavin, um, speaking of football, you were obviously a footballer. You still have the legs, by the way. Don't go. <laughs> Don't go. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me who is the one player, one of the best players that you played against. Played against? Yes. And played with. Um, geez. you know, I played, so in my era, Chiefs was the dominant, you know, Memelodi were Memelodi United. Oh, yes, yes, it yes. It was a grey and black team. They never even had, okay, they come in sort of the late, later Memelodi Sundowns when A.B. Croc and them bought it and, but Chiefs were the dominant team in, in my era mm. and they were like, they, they won most of the trophies. To be fair, Durban City, when I started with the top team, we never had the financial clout to Lenick in Cape Town. We, we, and we were always selling players and. Lenig was very good in the 70s when it was a big, mm. big club mm -hmm. before my time. But my era, uh, you know, there were some excellent players. And, and the game, you know, with amalgamation, sort of 78, 79, when all the leagues came together, I, I mean, I made my debut only in 1982, 80, you know, I played um, as a young 17, you know. So um, the game was different and all the styles came together. We had the white league, the black league, mm. and the coloured federation league. And when you put this whole thing together, there was a good brand of football, you know. Um, and it was very, very difficult as a white team to play against black players because they were undisciplined. You know, the left wing didn't stay left wing. The right wing didn't stay right wing. <laughs> you know, so guys like Teenage Dudler, who was a left winger, he used to go get the ball from the goalkeeper and start playing one-twos down the middle of the field, but he was a left winger. Interesting. You know, so... Um, you know, th it was very different. So, you know, we got a good we had a good structure in those days, and we were coached by an English guy. You know, Budgie Byrne was a legend, played for England, great coach. So he put us in a good structure, and and and, and we were close. Eighty nine, we should have won the league. Ninety two, we should have won the league. We came second, and we were always a top six team. Mm, you know, mm -hmm. but never. Never had that money to buy in, bring in the better mm. players. Would give us a bit of X factor, you know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody did the basics very well in our team over the years, you know. But um, so the best players, the best player I played with, mm. for me personally, there's Bacos. He's a he's a household legend. He played for Islands Park. He's an absolute legend of a person, legend of a man. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was fantastic in my era. Played with against. You know, you know, I Ace Nitsulengwe was the best. Ace Ace Nitsulengwe was mm. the game would you know Ace and Joma was brilliant, but mm. Ace Ace just I don't know. The game would be a hundred miles an hour, and he would get the ball, and he would just walk with it, and the whole game would just stop, and and he would just walk with the ball like that, and then you know you, you once you went near him, you got to be careful because you're not making you or or play one two around you or something. So he was. You know, uh, teenage obviously was exciting and, you know, he was dynamic, but mm -hmm. Ace for me was the glue of car and if he, he, As I he matured. Yeah, and I think uh, I think if if Kaiser Chiefs did a, the best 11, he would be number one, in my wow. opinion. Wow, okay. I, think wow. Ace, I think if you ask uh, Kaiser Matong, 
if you asked him today, who's his best players ever had, I think Ace would be, if he's at the top two, I'd be very surprised. And he's had some really good players, you know, wow. guys that you've. So the 80s, they dominated. They were the dominant force. You know, the crowds, we used to get 50, 60 yeah. a year. I mean, those double headers at Ellis Park, I played in a few of those. Um, the noise must have been you know, you, you know, it was, it was, it was, you actually shat in your pants, you know what I mean? You know, it yeah. was so intimidating. Obviously, yeah. we don't have one support in the stadium. Yeah. Not one. Not one. We're a Cape Town team. The Chiefs, yeah. And then you go in in there and uh, you're playing a double header and it was, it's, those JPS games and those games were, you know, John play a special, that, that knockout trophy. You're out. It was fantastic times, you know. And how do you deal, um, you just mentioned right now that, I mean, playing at a big stadium and having all these spectators here and all the pressure that comes with it, how do you deal with players that have the jitters or players that just have behavioral issues? Oh, how do oh, you approach these things? It's unbelievable. It's a good question there because Monday to Friday you'll see a player, he's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And you think to yourself, well, I'm going to play him Saturday because I've got, I've got a gut feel. Mm. Put him in on Saturday, he can't, can't tie his bootlaces. Mm. He couldn't control the ball. Then you'll get another player who's really a bad trainer. They're I mean, not bad, but they 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 don't show. And mm. come Saturday, he comes alive, you know. So that's knowing your players, knowing what you're signing, knowing what you've got. Um, uh, and, and then you get a player that's like Dr. Water. He just takes on and he, he just accepts it, you know. Um, I, you know, I always found as a player I was better. Um, and, you know, the big occasions, well, I always felt I was better then, you know. Would rise uh, mm -hmm, you up a mm -hmm. level. Yeah, yeah. I would do it quicker, simpler. You know, it's amazing when your concentration. You know, like when you have to really concentrate at something, how you that you can hear a pin drop. You know, mm. you know, like you can, and your awareness becomes so much more. And and I always felt, you know, um, yeah. Those, the, but there's a big difference in players. Yeah. You know, do you have it. rules? Do you have rules, for example, 48 hours before a match, do not go out, or do you just let the guys be? I played my best games and went out tonight. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm, you, there's, there's, there's this thing in South Africa that you must put them in camps and yes. hotels. And I'm the only club that don't want to camp. I don't camp. Wow, Gavin. One every league, don't no camping. Don't believe in camping. I think it's the worst thing to do with players. Put them in a room uh, 20, how many hours before a game, eating supper, three meals a day, getting, so they eat, go to lie down, eat, go lie down. You can't have meetings with them and talk to them because it's too much. I feel you, you, you come into the game, so if you go into a camp five o'clock and you're playing the next night at eight o'clock, mm. you come into a camp at five o'clock, have a meal at six, you already come to a game the day before. You shouldn't. Let's, I, I think you're better in your own surroundings being – now, the married guys like to go to camp and the single guys you don't want to go to don't camp. Don't want to go to camp. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. So because the married guys want to get away from, from their, their wives. for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you, yeah. If you, but if you ask the question with most players and the people say, oh, well, they'll go out drinking. Well, if they go out drinking, they, they, they disrespect our team, they mm. disrespect the game, they disrespect me, and they will get caught out and I'll get rid of them. You know what I'm saying? So then the, the other the other side of the coin is, oh, but we we build this bond together, and we, we. But then they don't sleep because they're two in a room. The other two come in their room. They play. A PS the whole night. Mickey, Mickey games, Mouse games yeah. now. They're not like our day when we never we never had phones. We used to play cards or, or something else. And 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 I think it takes a, and it's draining, the line sitting. I mean, I've just come off a camp, and I had you know, like breakfast this morning on an airplane. Now tomorrow I'm on a bus. At Hoppers Nine, get there, lunch, train, eat. Then we play at Hoppers Seven the next night. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, the meals you eat. I mean, Jesus, you know. <laughs> so you know. Speaking <laughs> of volume of meals and stuff, I'd like to just have a quick word on sports science, and and big. that's that's a big part of the modernization of the game. As and, much and as this thing has changed, it stays the same. All the bullshit that you hear, and when we played. We would say, no, we would say protein. We ate steak. Yeah. We had a steak. Now, could you have a steak and play? No. Mm. I, I, had, uh, I used to eat uh, toast and honey and a cup of tea. That's all. And I ate that the whole day. I, I, I needed to feel light when I played. Mm -hmm. I think the players eat too much. Now it's pastas, salads, no this, no that. Um, Five-course meal, basically. Yeah, there's too much eating, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and I... I, I, I so sports science 
um, about the recovery. Um, I still believe 48 hours before a game, it, you should have a low key session because I always think 48 hours you struggle to recover. To recover. So if you train, say you're playing Saturday and you have a hard session on Thursday, I think you'll, by Saturday you're naked. Friday mm -hmm. you might be okay. It's like you play Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you're more tired than than than, than Sunday. So you you know those. I I I I I'm quite I'm quite big on those type of things. And what about the statistical data side of things from a sports science standpoint? Kind of so of what? the idea of this player has played this many minutes. games or minutes in a thing, he's statistically more likely to pick up an injury if he plays here. Yeah, obviously, this helps for people with deeper squads because you've got the opportunity to yeah, do rotations. That, so you don't have that. So time, you've yeah. got to play your best team all the I, time. I, I hear that. I hear that argument. Then I said, well, why are we paying them? Wow, okay. Why are we That's a valid them? question. Why are we paying them? Because he should play, rest, play. If he's playing and going to play outside games, <laughs> drinking or partying, or right. not sleeping, then he's, he's treating it disrespect in the profession. So, so in the off time, they have to take the rest utmost time. care. Like now, we got recovery. off the plane, I hopefully, please God, most of my guys are at home just, you know. Recovering. Do whatever, you know. Maybe the wise one would take him to Santa and shopping and, yeah. you know, that's another problem. Um, so the recovery is, is very important. The minutes played, I I, I, I don't get that. I, 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 if someone can explain to me that, so we play in a big game on Saturday and our best player, our centre back, hypothetically, we're playing against a strong, strong team. We need our centre back. And you're telling me I can't play him because he's played too many minutes. I find that very hard to believe. Mm. Perhaps that I'm gonna leave him an out. issue with the. Oh, he's going to break down. Oh, let him break down after the game. You know what I mean? If, right. if he, oh, please God, he doesn't break down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if he, if he, if he, if he what's the word? Hydrates. I yeah. love all these new words. Mm. Hydrates <laughs> well, eats well. And the most important thing for football players is sleep. And the biggest problem in South Africa is people don't sleep. I'm telling you, in South Africa, the biggest problem, is you go anywhere in the world, where on lunchtime people are sleeping at lunchtime in South Africa. Why? No, oh, it doesn't happen. No, you go oh, yes, in the yes, rest of the that. world. Oh, yeah. People at lunchtime are eating lunch and especially in summer, right? So but in South Africa, at lunchtime everybody goes to sleep. Why? Because they never sleep in the night. Mm. How many people are sleeping? What's the word? Six hours, eight hours? What's what's it? Eight yeah, hours? Eight, mm -hmm. up to eight hours, right? Between and I always and say to you, it's not the hours that you sleep; it's the hours before midnight that count. Right. Remember that. It's not the hours that you sleep, it's the hours before midnight that count. So basically, you should be trying to get to bed at a reasonable hour before midnight. Now, it's very difficult to try mm. and go to bed at nine or past nine and wake up at six the next day. It's shit, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. But your body needs recovery. Body, when you sleep, your body recovers. And it's, as an especially elite, as, as an, an athlete. athlete, athlete yeah, 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 that's what yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to be yeah, doing. Yeah, 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 yeah of yeah. course. I mean, when you're tired, you sleep and you feel so much better yeah. when you've had a long sleep. So, and hydrating. Well, I struggle to host one of these podcasts if I've had two, three nights of yeah. bad sleep, you know. Yeah, that's no, just, my me, mental I'm, focus now, is. Now, with me, I'm a, like, it's a 24 7 on the go, on the go, on the go. I don't sleep. So, that that is my biggest concern, you know, me personally. And I don't play anymore. Yeah. Well, the, hopefully your players are sleeping. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, now, yeah. coach, um, you've had, you are, like he's mentioned earlier, that you are. One of the most, if not the most decorated coaches in the country. You've coached the likes of, um, you know, Black Leopards, uh, Muraka Swallows. You've been the Seven Stars, Hellenic. Tell me which trophy or which cup or which league would you say was the best accomplishment of your career thus far? Or the best team or the best club I coached? Or? Team, coach, or whichever. Um, team what or gave coached. me the most satisfaction? Yes, yeah. the one that As you felt is Obviously, when you win a trophy. Yeah. Because we... You know, you're not, you're, the thing in football, I don't care who you are, or mm. maybe Pep at the moment, because he's flying. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to win everything. So, you, you know, you, it's going to be a lot of disappointments. And obviously, if, if you're not one of the top clubs or don't have the financial clout, mm. you're not going to win much. <laughs> no. But when you do get a chance, you, you know, you hopefully can take it. But I think for me personally, it's, the satisfaction is more about seeing teams mature, seeing human beings mature, seeing human beings go on to have better lives. I mean, I've got players phoning me now from just 1998 
had one or two guys phone me about how they thank me. Wow. About their life is in order, that, you know, they listen to my advice. Um, so, you know, th that Leopards team in 2000, which is 24 years ago, I mean, those guys now are all in their 40s, some of them now. Mm -hmm. we, they still phone me on a regular basis. Um, you know, my family says, hello, how's my children? My children have, have got twin girls. Oh, they, they were, grow now. They, yeah. were eight, nine, they were eight months, nine months a year then. How are the girls? You know, so those are the most satisfying phone calls you can get in life. Just want to thank you what you did for my life and, you know, and this and that. Um, yeah. To, uh, leopards, leopards for me was seven stars for me was my seven stars are I had the best that was your beginning even yeah seven stars was the best because mm -hmm. I had the best team we went 75 games unbeaten mm. I was like the king I could my, my, my daughter could have run the team give him a little bit keep a structure blah 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 let you play because we had the best players mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was easy believe me yes we got games are hard we win one all and we're fighting and, but we could play and you know but it was in the first division. And then we like, uh, but leopards for me to take people that were really, really, I don't want to use the word primitive. Is it primitive or, or come from humble beginnings? Right. Yeah. Real, yeah. real rural, rural. Rural. I don't yes. mean the, uh, rural. Mm. I mean, I had a player, Christopher Nasjadivi. I went to his home. I had to go through a river to get to his house. Yeah, really. Mm. So I went through a river, like waste yeah. walk through a river to get to the other side to get to his house. And every day he had to. Walk when, through that river. When the river went down, when with the rain came, he couldn't get couldn't get across. You understand? Wow. And, and he lived in a in a hut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just you know, okay, where he's today, we talk. You know, he's not. He, but those are the type of things to try and give him a platform to. Let's forget about tactics, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we're playing Santos in Cape Town, and the wind is blowing, and we're going to be tactically like this. Let's forget about it. Let's how to live. I never get. We went to the hotel. Some of them, their first trip. So I went to check the rooms. They were sleeping on the floor in the, in the, in the garden court. And I said, guys, you can sleep in the beds. Like, no, no, they like to sleep on the floor. They used to sleep on They're the floor. They used to it. Now mm. I'm talking about professional football. And, and, and they don't want to eat down in, 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 in the buffet. And then, you know, they're taking food up to the rooms. I said, no, you can't do that. You must eat here. And, and it's like, a, I'm not saying my way is the right way, but they're not. So now to try and. Slowly uh, ease them so into. So, you know, you, you, you. How much money are you getting? I'm earning X. Okay, now we need to. And I phone. I get a guy, insurance guy. Take. Let's get him a little policy. Let's get him a little retirement and new policy. So even if he pays it for ten years, like you're saving a little bit of money, don't spend this. That you can spend. That's um, uh, jolly money. Yeah, right. You can use that money. So there's three grand a month or four, whatever it is. You can use that money. But the other money you're not going to touch. No, but I said, hey. And now, you know what I'm saying? We, we, those Giving their life some structure, yeah. some financial and advice. It, it, if I, was, I was there one year. I mean, what they did after that, but try and give some structure, telling them how to get a job. Look now, get something interest, if, you know, do something else because this thing finishes. Even better than three league titles in a row? The human element? <sighs> Obviously, that's... <laughs> that's yeah. something, right? Eh? right? Yeah. <laughs> but you must know, winning a league title with Super Sport and winning a league title with Kaiser Chiefs is a huge difference. Right. We went in with no supporters. <laughs> yeah. I You're in the stadium that. celebrating there's 150 people. Win a league title with Kaiser Chiefs. And that'd be There'd something. be 30,000 in that stadium. Mm. And you going out there, that you can't get out the stadium. So I wouldn't say it was anti-climaxes. It was fantastic for a club. How difficult is for a club of Supersport or Vits to mm. win a league title? you got no idea. We don't have the support. We don't have the 12th man. You, the 50-50 calls you're not going to get. 70 30 you and, don't get and the limited resources which limited brought, re brought we had up already, and we yeah. had to trade to buy to, i was a little bit better off then at super sport and at vits we could get one or two uh my vits team we had bought one player the rest were all frees we got them free out of contract players and made a team mm -hmm. so people say oh you bought no 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 okay. i heard somebody a coach have a go at me in the media about oh look at him at vits he mustn't talk because he bought his team we bought one player we sold lots of players. The rest were free. Nazir Ali, free. Tyson Latswaya, free. Glanty, free. Manip Joseph, free. I'll go through the whole team. Tabang Manari, free from Cosmos. Uh, you know, I'll go through the whole team. You mm -hmm. know? So uh, we built a team, but we, had, we, we could pay better wages. And that's also important, you know. But for me, certainly 
going back to your question, for me, it's better to see individuals strive in their lives and, you know, I sleep better and maybe not winning as much as I used to, but because I think the difference is the gap is so wide now, you know, mm. it wasn't as wide as this, it's wide now. I'm sure it'll come back, uh, Gavin, you've, th- your your side plays great ball mm-hmm. and uh, we, we love watching your teams play. Uh, we will be fans. One thing with our, my teams, you, there'll be excitement. Yeah. <laughs> there'll be balls in the box. There'll be balls coming in our box, in their box. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I, 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 I hope you're able to get the legs and some of these injuries lighten yeah, up for Yeah, we, we, we're struggling at the moment. And I think it's taken its toll on us, right. you know, what we're trying to do by playing where we're playing. Still in a respectable third in the league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not, not doing badly at all. And we're it was a tough a game. game in PE. And I always we're two, wonder we're two how points he's a game. able to do that. Well, you know? we're two points a game. You know, if you end up two points a game. You, you can win the league. Well, well not this Sundance. year. Yeah, not Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Not Sundance You're not going to win it now, yeah. yeah. But, you know, there's an old adage, win your home games, draw your away games. Um, well, we haven't had much of a home wreck, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we want to go into that one because it really does touch my heart. Um, you are an avid reader, um, yes. especially when, yeah, yeah, you love your books. I mean, yes, I'm yeah, a big yeah. reader books. Yeah. Um, which coach the reason because say, I can't work a computer. <laughs> <laughs> you are also primitive. Um, tell me which coach would you say is your go-to when you need inspiration, when you need to, you know, just find your way within this coaching climate. You know, I've, I've been, I went, um, I've been overseas a lot, and I go overseas quite a bit. Mm. And um, I like to. It's very difficult now to get close to the modern day managers. Mm. Uh, like I was in Man City last last uh, last year, year before, year before, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't really get to talk to Pep Guardiola mm. because he's so busy, and I I just wanted ten fifteen minutes with him. But I watched the sessions from afar, uh, and then I went down to the junior coaches, which is sort of a filter of his methodology meth- methodology metho- yeah. method <laughs> <laughs> yes. down into the into the into the under twenty three team. And I had a big interaction with uh, Jason Wilcox, okay. who was a left winger. who played with Benny at Blackburn. He used to was the winger, and he runs. He ran the youth development there, and, and I had a big interaction with him about modern trends and uh, what, and it, everything he said. Not to be blasé, was wasn't new. It's pretty simple, and P, he, he was right. He says people paint this picture like they doing. But they've got better. They got good players. They have mm-hmm. good resources, and they have got good coaches through mm-hmm. the age groups, and they and they, and they do want to play brand of football that it's easy on the eye and technically, and so they've changed that a lot. Um, but they can do it. Then you go to a club like Stoke City, mm-hmm. go to their youth development, where my friend, it's results driven here, yeah? and <laughs> this ball is going forward much quicker. Yes, and the technical ability they cannot get the better ones. So the type of game, but they are a club that's a survival club, mm. you know, and they're a club that's got great tradition. Uh, and Man City, if you've seen what the 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 the, the, the people that own the club, um, Saudis or yes, uh, uh, Qatar, yes. Qatar, where they're from, I'm not quite, yeah. I mean, that whole precinct around the Etihad, wow, oh, man, the, the they, development's they, been amazing. So the city, they beautified it. They put bridges and flowers and walkways and that whole little uh, what they've done is unbelievable so they've just taken this man city who was always a big club but never where they are now of course and just elevated to and united have sort of been eclipsed <laughs> yeah results wise player wise everything and i'm sure recruitment wise and according to cristiano ronaldo the jacuzzis oh yes of course <laughs> listen players are spoilt now eh? Yeah, you know, it's play, you know, but at hey, that level especially. But the, like they say, let's give the player the best treatment, the best of everything, and then, and then they must produce. Look, if if Real Madrid's facilities were good enough for him, and he translates that to results on the pitch, then yeah, I mean, Look, let's be honest, that Real Madrid. That's part of if you take right. European football, is the greatest. I mean, they're the greatest. biggest. They're Real Madrid, because how do you judge it? You judge it by European titles, I think. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, what's big? It's not Man's, like they have a what's Man City's show. biggest chase is to win the, the the Champions League. And now they've mm-hmm. got one. They got, but can uh, can can and they, they f- and they thirteen or fourteen behind. I mean, Real, Real Madrid. Madrid. Yeah. Do you get so to, can so they can you know the up. magnitude? Yeah. Unreal. Of where Huge they are game. and where Real Madrid is. Mm-hmm. Man United, the great Man United. Everybody goes on about three. Um, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Compare that to Real Madrid. 
No, the great Real Madrid, uh, they've been doing it year after year and they continue to invest and, and redevelop and yeah, yeah, their yeah. sides just look better. And they've got, and a, they got a, they've got a, they've got a, they've got a way about them, haven't they? You know what I mean? And they've yeah. got this awe about them. And they weren't very great. They weren't very good in the weekend because no. Atletico battered them. But they got this aura about Real Madrid, isn't it? And they got they, they don't really have a good side this year. Uh, I'd argue that uh, no, I mean, it's, a, it's a side that's perhaps going to be it's better. In a, in, a new it's phase. in a new phase. And he's changed his shape. Mm. They're playing a different system, different structure, because to suit the players. I'm a big fan of Carlo Ancelotti. Big, Carlo big Ancelotti fan. is the best manager. I'm uh, inclined to believe. That's, that, that, that says the least. Mm. Now, other managers, uh, Pep also, but... Angelotti is calm. And the best part of Carlo Angelotti, is, and in the books that I've read about him, is managing up. Mm. Mm. And in football clubs, the most important thing is managing up. How do you manage your CEO, your chairman, your owners? And I do that because you expectations. You know, mm. so you win one week. No, no, your next two games, you've got so-and-so and so-and-so. You need to get six points. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy. And, uh, do you know what's going on here? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So managing up Colin Gelotti and what he receives is as a player, yeah. as, a, as a manager, as a coach, whatever you want to people call it. People forget the AC Milan years. Only him. people talk well about it. You ask Ronaldo about, you know, Angelotti will get his, you know. Yeah, you I'm, know. A, I'm a big fan of Carlo. Uh, Gavin, I've, I feel like we've already taken up so much of your time. We know you've got other places to be. Yeah. No, I'm okay. And uh, I, I, I'm just desperate to, to just see a little – idea of why 442 will still work today versus uh the idea that everyone says that it's dead and what's the difference between a 442 today versus what it was in the 90s um well the the the, the 90s what do you want me to move it or what yeah yes, if you, you can for it. us you know well i mean i think if you take if you take if you take the 90s the 442 was pretty much like this okay yes mm -hmm. it was the night it was 424 the Brazilian really side was. of the seventies into the eighties played four two four, but they had so much quality across the front. Yes, that they could play four two four, and they played out and out wingers, pace and tactical ability. And, and the two up the front an was Pele and I can't remember. We have Jozinho's and Revelinos and these guys, yeah. and they had two guys in midfield who could play, and that was it. I mean, I even, thought once you know once you once they went past the first line, I think in modern day. Team started overloading, putting extra plays in centre midfield. So that's and then England went from from this four four two into sort of a a, a a diamond effect. The wingless wonders, it was called. Remember? Uh, geez, yeah, to to try and accommodate uh, Stephen Gerrard, Paul Scholes, and Frank so Lampard. So they, all they at sort the same of had time. this type of situation. The right. wingless wonders, and they yeah. played that sort of a shape. diamond in the midfield. Yeah, you sort of had a diamond in the midfield at once. At the, that that was quite. And, that was quite uh, and the distractible. The two strikers had to play off each other's abilities. It yeah. was Michael Owen and, yeah, and these strikers uh, Emil Hiski. These, these strikers yeah. would play down the sides, play down the sides, and there were more runners than sort of holders, if you want to call it. And this right. was your creative play. This guy in the middle here was your creative player. You know, you got on the ball. and But uh, there, was, there was also a lot of space in the side. You know what I'm saying? Then sort of what happened then later, I'm, I'm not going per number, you know, the yeah. Dutch... The Dutch sort of played this, this structure, um, three, three, Ajax. four three three, and then it, it sort of went where they had a guy here, then the guy pushed in here, and they went to a back three, which is Ajax. The stuff mm. the, the number four came in, and they sort of played this structure. You know, that's that's okay when you're playing in the Dutch league, my friend. <laughs> which is very difficult in England. <laughs> or when you're Italian or football, Italian football, yeah. Spanish football. Then Sachi came in. Well, I'm a great. I loved him. Mm -hmm. The old. Um, AC Milan. Remember AC Milan? Yes. And they sort of went, okay, we're going to go a little bit like this, like this, but we're going to drop them in down a little bit and play a little bit closer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in a 4-4-2. So there's a big difference in, in the 4-2-4. They play the wide plays a little bit closer. They had sort of mm. a gullet and playing on the side, Van Basten, and then Angelotti was in the midfield there, by the way. Mm. So that with, with, with this type of structure... What you've got to try, then you then they went to the Brazilian box system. You know the box system. They play like this. Okay, so the Brazilians play like this. Mm -hmm. Ninety four, Bebeto, uh, was it up? The, what is that guy's name? And they played with the box. They play with the box midfield. 
Okay, so that obviously gives the fullbacks kafus and yes. these guys to sort of come into these spaces. So, do you know you know football was invented a straight line formation it was eleven just and then you play. Then obviously it went to a double formation two three five. You know two three five with half backs and things like that mm. and inside forwards and, and wingers and nines and that. And then Hungary played against England 1953 and Puskas, who was a striker, dropped mm. into midfield and Billy Wright, who was the captain of England, didn't know, I'm not marking anybody because number five was supposed to mark their number nine. So the idea of a false nine today. and that, So people talk about, oh, Pip with this great false nine. 1953. Shit. 1953. Puskas. Yeah. And people yeah. talk about uh, inverted fullbacks and inverted centre backs. Mark Fish in '95, who played for Bafana, started at centre back, but he ended up up front, didn't he? Because mm. he was just yeah. coming to midfield. And so, I think a lot to do is with the players that you've got. Mm. But I'm saying, if you start off in a four-four-two, just give me a basic structure. Here. And these guys on the side, these guys here, and this guy here, they need to be understand when to go wide, when to tuck in, when to play underneath, and playing off the sides. Do you understand? Yes, absolutely. So, and people say, oh, your playmaker. Your playmakers are your fullbacks. These guys need to be good players on the ball. These guys in the sides. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they're the guys generally playing the first ball forward. So they need to be good passers of the ball. But it, it, it all depends on what – if you can build a team around how you want to play. So now everybody's doing this. Obviously now well, you look we're at tucking the, the fullbacks here. We're tucking the fullbacks here. And we sort of push on here and then we sort of leave the wingers wide here. You know what I'm saying? Which sort of happens with Pep, okay? Now what Pep done this season, he said, no, 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 no. We're not doing it like that. We're going to take John Stones and move him in here. Yes? Yes. So now they go into the back three, you know, which I think is better because what it does, it gives yourself more pace here and it gives yourself more pace here instead of isolating center backs on the sides. So, Yeah. But if you if depends you, on the personnel, like you personnel. say. Mm. But if you play four four two, and you go back here and you bring in an old four four two, and you got one of your strikers coming in here, and we split the midfield, and we tuck in a bit more, you know. You Especially come, if you've got a ball playing striker who can yeah. do that full and, back. And and then obviously we need to support him quickly, and then we you know then we come in and then we can play so and of course the idea of your formation shifting depending what side of the pitch you're on yeah. following it also following depends player. where you press it mm. right where you press it which i did a tactical analysis on if you press two. really high yeah because they play out the back we're going to try and nick this ball you know let's try and nick it let's try and set it what do they call them traps well we'll we're going to show them where we want him to go we give the ball to the weaker one and then we'll let him come and then bring it out for us. And then we'll try and, you know, squeeze him and try and play out from there, you know. Mm. Gavin, thank you so much for this. Uh, I mean, it's a real privilege to get a tactical is, analysis from the master. We'll go, yeah. we'll, go, we'll go on and on and on. Um, yeah, we could talk about this all day. I know you've got places to go. So we're really just so grateful for you joining us here today. And we wish you all the luck with the upcoming season. We know that you will do incredibly well, especially with the limited resources that you've got access to. And We've got a good young legs. side and... Yeah. And you're going to get blips. You, you, you have mm. up. Like Absolutely. last week we had up. Yeah. And then we finished the game against Chiefs with six under 19 players. And then, you know, this week we lost last night. You know, they took a bit of a battering. Um, but yeah, that's for, yeah. We've got so many more questions in future. Yes. Tepi, do you want to wrap up with yes, the last one? Yes, yes. In conclusion, um, Coach um, John Gavin Hunt. That's the one. <laughs> How would you like to be remembered? Well, <laughs> You want to be remembered where, when you when you met somebody, they went away with uh, a, a good feeling. Okay. Uh, that's how I want to be remembered. So when when I'm gone and dusted and, they, and and people think of me, they'll they'll have a smile on their face, because I'm that type of guy. You know, you see the serious side, but there's a lot of there's more joke and mm -hmm. me. There's more fun and jokes and and more taking the Mickey and taking the you know what we used to call it. I won't use the word out of each other and uh, <laughs> and I, I would like to be remembered and, and someone that's touched people's lives and, and and made a difference in their life in terms of advice um, and and made and make them smile when they think about me. When I think about guys I played with and were passed on, I start laughing and I start smiling and you know and uh, and I like yeah, I like to be remembered. the trophies and that is, you know, besides the way and 
and giving young players a chance. I've given many a chance, many, many, many. Beautiful. Love that. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, ballers, for joining us. As always, remember to check out the Betway app and use the affiliate code Onside ZA when joining as a new member of Betway. We will be back with you again next week. Thank you, Gavin Hunt. Thank Thanks, you, so. Teppi Worldwide. Thank and you. most of all, thank you to you, ballers. Remember, stay onside. onside. Don't be offside. Stay onside. Stay onside.